and be seen uh, with a great deal more ease. The uh, motorcycle policeman, a uh, veritable phalanx of them, has been gathered here getting ready to escort him. And before long, we will see the Khrushchev party leaving out of our view at the moment, other members of the party, including uh, Mayor Isles, the Lieutenant Governor, uh, the members of the Chamber of Commerce, Mrs. Khrushchev, of course, Mrs. Loveless, and all the others who have been uh, present for these brief welcoming ceremonies will be getting into their cars, and the whole cavalcade will head for downtown Des Moines. Motorcycle escorts, you see, uh, on either side. Uh, the car which bears Khrushchev carries uh, on its forward portion, as you can see, on the running board on either side, a Russian flag and an American flag. Directly in front of it are two other cars. One is a Des Moines police car. Another is a civilian-type car, which is being operated by police and other security officers. While all this goes on in the background, we uh, are not too much aware of, because it is just at the top of your picture, the unloading of luggage, which is, of course, a part of the whole uh, paraphernalia uh, for a tour of this dimension. There goes Khrushchev's party now in his open car, heading for the entrance of the Iowa Air Guard hangar and for McKinley, from which they'll go to Fleur Drive, the airport road, and head on for downtown Des Moines. Now you're beginning to get some idea of how the size of this uh, convoy is, is shaping up. Other cars are following rapidly, and uh, some of the cars will bear members of the press, radio, and television, although I can certainly tell you not nearly as many as wish they were being able to get into the cavalcade. Some of the closed cars are now following, and as you can see, the open convertible in which Khrushchev is riding is already flanked by the Des Moines Motorcycle Police with their tricycles, normally used for traffic duty, and uh, slowly they are beginning to move toward the position from which they will be able to emerge onto McKinley and head on out for Fleur Drive and downtown Des Moines. Uh, we are now getting an excellent uh, look at the entire lineup. There are something like, let me see, three, six, nine, 15. There are 17 cars in the official party. And possibly you're going to catch somewhere along the line one of the cars about halfway or so past which has a great many photographers clustering on, around, and on top of it. And how they're going to stay on all the way on that ride down uh, Fleur Drive, I do not know. I don't envy them the job of sticking to a machine that some of them are going to have to do while trying to operate cameras. Now you're back watching some of the people on the edge of the ramp uh, as the Khrushchev party and its escorting police begin to pass us. Uh, cameraman uh, in the way for just a moment here, but uh, these are many of the air guard and other persons attached to this base who are watching as Khrushchev's car with the attendant motorcycle police passes by. That gives you a pretty good look as they approach the entrance to the, uh, to the Des Moines Airport Air National Guard Center. There we are with a portion of the administration building of the air guard in the background. An excellent view now, and before long, the people of Des Moines will be welcoming Khrushchev into the city itself. We are now about at the end of our opportunity for a view of the Khrushchev reception and his departure from the airport, but uh, for a moment, we can probably gain a view of buses following up here. Uh, which are uh, also more or less pursuing, shall we say, the Khrushchev party. They are uh, newsmen and others, including a couple of ambulances, we noticed, that were brought along just in case anybody needed ambulances out here today. Polk County Sheriff's cars, uh, some other cars, also escorted by motorcycle police. There is the ambulance, one of the two, which was brought out here for use in case of any kind of an emergency. And these two are leaving along with the buses which carry some of the newsmen and other persons involved in the reception for Khrushchev and particularly in covering the story as is carried all over the world from Des Moines, the capital of the city of Iowa. Here's an excellent view showing you still the lineup of military police, 200 or some of whom were brought in from the 5th Army area in Chicago at Fort Sheridan, Illinois, and now they are beginning to break up. They've apparently been told that their duty is over and the Khrushchev party is beginning to head for downtown Des Moines. And now, one more look at the downtown Hotel Fort Des Moines area as uh, they await expectantly for the arrival of Premier Khrushchev. And 
it is about time for us to say that from the Des Moines airport, very shortly, from two other vantage points in this pool telecast, you will get views of the arrival of Russian Premier Khrushchev as his cavalcade passes first the point of vantage at 14th and Locust, and then arrives at the hotel for Des Moines. We are now going to turn you over to the other points from which television cameras will be operating to give you an eyewitness description and a personal view of this historic event, the arrival of Russian Premier Khrushchev. This is Jack Shelley at the Des Moines airport. This is Herb Plambeck uh, down in downtown Des Moines, and of course you're seeing now some of the crowds lined up on the streets down here. Jim Zobel is with me. We'll have some comments about some of the real objectives of Premier Khrushchev's visit here in Iowa. Uh, Jim, perhaps you'd have a word to give about the crowd. Well, we have a large crowd, Herb. Uh, about an hour and a half ago, we went over to the Fort Des Moines Hotel, and the crowd was almost as large then as it is right now, but it seems to be increasing as more and more people come up front and try to watch. I think, Herb, we can say is welcome at the Des Moines Airport. National Guard was friendly, but reserved. The, might, we might make note of the fact that his Boeing 707 military transport took off from San Francisco. 19 minutes ahead of schedule this morning, arrived about four minutes ahead of schedule, which is, I think, doing pretty good on a windy day like this. The party, of course, is now traveling east on McKinley to Fleur Drive, down Fleur to Locust, Locust to 10th, and then down 10th to the Fort Des Moines Hotel. Streets along his route, if you've been traveling in Des Moines today, or streets along the route that he will travel tomorrow have been either barricaded or emergency parking signs have put up. No parking allowed in the general area of travel. He'll leave the hotel at 1.30 this afternoon for a tour of the Des Moines Packing Company and the John Deere Works. Herb, uh, we've been to Russia. I mean, you've been to Russia, and, uh, and I'd like to ask you some questions about it right now that I think might uh, bear out some of the things that uh, people want to know. First of all, it comes to my mind that I believe, despite the fact he's been to New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, that really this is probably the key spot of his visit outside perhaps of his talks with uh, President Eisenhower. Yes, Jim, I'm sure you're right about that. Uh, Khrushchev's visit here uh, sort of opens a floodgate of memories for those of us in the first American delegation to get behind the Iron Curtain. I might tell you, Jim, our reception was considerably warmer than his has been up to now. The Soviet visit here in Iowa is certainly no coincidence. This has been one of Mr. K's most cherished dreams for a long time, and next to the talks with President Eisenhower, the Soviet leader's major objective is to see American agriculture in action. This I know, and there's good reason. Khrushchev has made what some refer to as a reckless boast that Russia will equal or surpass American agricultural production by 1965, and that's quite a challenge. It'll take some doing. I've seen Soviet agriculture. It's a far cry from the efficient and tremendous production achieved by our family farms, but Khrushchev must try to give Russians a better diet. And perhaps I should add, uh, looking at him as uh, we are now in, uh, here in Iowa, perhaps he ought to have a little better diet himself. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, Soviet Union needs to provide more meat and milk and eggs for the people of that vast, sprawling, and restless land. What's equally important, Khrushchev must release more manpower from farms. 50% or more of Russia's present population is actually farming. So more workers must be used to make more consumer goods to meet the ever-growing demands and needs of a rapidly increasing population. That's really why Mr. K is here in Iowa, the nation's top farm state, Jim. Well, we see right now, Herb, if we can break in just a moment, the lobby of the Fort Des Moines Hotel, which is waiting his arrival approximately five to 10 minutes from now. The motorcade is still coming down Fleur Drive, according to our report. Traveling at speeds, uh, we would estimate between 30 to 45 miles per hour. The street of the, has been completely cleared of parking and, of course, uh, barricaded, as have all the downtown Des Moines streets, Locust and 10th, over which the Khrushchev party will travel on their way to the Fort Des Moines. Herb, uh, a few moments ago, you mentioned the real significance of the Khrushchev Iowa visit. Now, do you think he's really going to be able to see what he wants to see here in Iowa? Yes, I think he is, Jim. Uh, first, may I call attention to the fact that there are Quite a number of guards, security officers, all about us in this downtown area. Now, in answer to your question, Jim, I've covered about every inch of the route that's planned for K and Company tomorrow. It'll be a miracle if the full schedule can be maintained. It's really an ambitious schedule. If fully carried out, it will give the Soviets a good, though a fleeting glimpse of Iowa towns, uh, well, like Granger and Perry and, let's see, Bagley and Baird and... Uh, I guess Woodward and Madrid and Luther and Ankeny and, of course, Coon Rapids and Ames. 
Most important of all, though, they will see what they most want to see, the productivity of Iowa's fertile farms. Now, I'd say this, Jim, if the hopes of Bob Garst materialize, Russia's boss man will see a lot of practical farming and will get to talk to some practical farmers. This is something he wants to do. He said it again and again. I don't know how fast the roly-poly 65-year-old Khrushchev can move, but uh, he'll have to be pushing every minute to see everything, and especially uh, does he want to see Iowa's corn. He referred to it a few minutes ago, Jim, you'll remember. He spoke uh, the word kukuroza. Well, that's the term for corn in Russia, and he's, mm -hmm. he's quite concerned about seeing that. One of the major stops tomorrow will involve a 640-acre cornfield where every harvesting operation will be shown, picking, shelling, drying, chopping, and ensling. Uh, perhaps, Jim, we ought to have just a word from you now. I have some more to say about this, uh, uh, the things that he's come to see here in Iowa, but uh, let's just break, bring the folks up to date on this picture. I think as we look down Locust Street, we can see uh, not a large crowd, but a medium-sized crowd. The bulk of the crowd downtown has actually gathered around the uh, Fort Des Moines Hotel. We're watching the entrance of Fleur and uh, Locust Street, where the motorcade will very shortly travel. You can see the police cars with the red lights flashing. The crowd is being held back, barricades all along Locust Street. The motorcade is traveling, as we said, at an estimated speed of between 30 and uh, 45 miles an hour, being escorted by police motorcycle escorts and also by the police cars we're watching right now. As they're clearing everybody back, it's a very uh, mannerly crowd, uh, no demonstrations so far, and I think as Herb mentioned, we can say that his welcome into the state of Iowa was certainly friendly but reserved and I don't believe anything that Governor Loveless said, uh, as opposed to what apparently what some of the West Coast mayors and so forth have said, uh, would be construed as anything which might set him off. He seems to be so far in a good mood. There's no possible way you could take exception to anything that Governor Loveless said. As a matter of fact, Governor Loveless said what most of us would have liked to have said ourselves. We hope that he'll get to see some of our communities, some of our farms, our schools, our churches, and the other things that uh, we're so proud of here in Iowa. And we're watching now the beginnings of the motorcade with the city officials, civic officials, state, government leaders, and members of the official Khrushchev party with their police escorts. And ladies and gentlemen, we take you now to Dick Green at the WITV remote location at 14th and Locust. Thanks, Jim, Dick Green, and Mike Collins. And uh, we've just witnessed the first entourage coming back, getting the people back uh, from the road. And Mike, uh, they're hurrying right through here. Surely are, Dick. I hope that the uh, caravan doesn't follow the pace of these first few patrol cars that have come through. A Des Moines police car coming by. It's been interesting to note the crowds a little bit. They're very sparse up to about 15 minutes ago. And I think when the pickup ended from the airport showing uh, Premier Khrushchev leaving, all of a sudden they emerged from out of the, the walls. We have seen uh, no signs here, no protest signs whatsoever on Locust, on our vantage point uh, from 14th and Locust. Uh, still looking down Locust, waiting for the first glimpse of the official party. They've cleared the streets, but everyone back to from the side. Uh, we noticed right out in front of us that uh, several people standing in the street, the police car stopped and made it very plain that they were to get back and stay back there while this uh, official party went through. The crowd uh, has been extremely well behaved. Uh, I think if there's any attitude, it's of extreme curiosity. Now we can see the first uh, beginning at the far end of Locust, just coming off Fleur Drive of the official party, the motorcycle escort, moving its way from west to east on Locust, which is ordinarily a one-way street moving in that direction. They have wasted very little time, uh, Mike, in getting uh, from the terminal, National Guard terminal downtown. Certainly the main purpose seems to be to get the premier and the party into the hotel as fast as possible. They are slowing a little bit to allow the, uh, the viewers, people on the corners, to get a better sight of him. Now they're moving uh, in good sight of us. In just a few seconds they will be passing right in front of our TV cameras. The escort of the police. Uh, calling for everyone to get back. And here they go by, Mr. Khrushchev, Governor Loveless, Mayor Isles. Moving uh, towards the Hotel Fort Des Moines, of course, the car driven by President Eisenhower's own personal driver. Mike, we're still looking for a glimpse of Mrs. Khrushchev. I get to see her, Dick. Uh, this is pretty important. Evidently, she was uh, fairly well behind in the procession. 
Here, uh, I'll see, that's not it either. Yes, there she goes, uh, Vias right now. The official party, Mrs. Khrushchev. Of course, uh, Premier is already gone, and uh, as we would guess, about ready to turn and come down towards the Fort Des Moines uh, Hotel. So from our vantage point here on Locust, we're going to switch you to the KRNT-TV vantage point at the Hotel Fort Des Moines and uh, come in down there. This is Len Howe of WHO-TV. The uh, procession is about to turn south off Locust now on the 10th and toward the Hotel Fort Des Moines. Uh, this crowd in this area has gathered uh, uh, fairly recently. Uh, it wasn't there not too long ago, I suppose the word spread. People came out of the office buildings to see Mr. K and his arrival here in Des Moines. Now we're on 10th Street, uh, headed toward the Fort Des Moines Hotel, where Mr. Khrushchev and his party uh, will stay. This is just a two-block stretch here and it won't take the party very long to get to the hotel. And this is the main crowd uh, welcoming Mr. Khrushchev to Des Moines. It's uh, a bit of applauding, as you can see, but not uh, any overly enthusiastic welcome. And those signs protesting his appearance here are still there. Uh, the police tried to make those people move away about an hour ago, but uh, the people came back. Now the party is unloading at the Fort Des Moines Hotel. Mr. Khrushchev still waving. Uh, now stepping toward the hotel. Mr. Lodge fast in front of our camera. There's Governor Loveless. They're looking over at the multitude of people uh, on the parking ramp just across the street. And now he's uh, greeting some of the crowd nearby. He's welcome to the hotel. That's Governor Lovelace right behind him. Ambassador Lodge, the tall man. He's coming over to uh, a little closer look at some of the people waiting for him there. Mr. Lodge is explaining something to him. A very fine picture of Mr. Khrushchev here in Des Moines. There's Mrs. Khrushchev in the picture now, uh, to your right, uh, right beside Mrs. Loveless. There's Mrs. Loveless. Now they're together, a wonderful picture of Mr. and Mrs. Khrushchev together outside the Hotel Fort Des Moines. She sees somebody she wants to wave to. There's a tremendous crowd just across the street from this location. Of course, the Khrushchev family is uh, in this party and they're coming into Des Moines and unloading while the center of attention, of course, is on Mr. Khrushchev himself and Mrs. Khrushchev. They will be staying at the Fort Des Moines Hotel. The top three floors have been reserved for this party. Mr. Khrushchev himself will stay in the presidential suite. Uh, some presidents have stayed there, incidentally. President Hoover among them, President Truman. Uh, more recently, it was occupied by Roy Rogers and his wife. This uh, is an unscheduled bit right here outside the uh, hotel. The original plan was for them to merely get out of their car and walk in, but uh, the plans change as Mr. Khrushchev moves along and decides uh, what he wants to do too. Uh, let's uh, bring in Herb here a minute. Something about the Khrushchev family. Well, just this, uh, Len, I think it should be said that plans are also being made for Mrs. Khrushchev at uh, Coon Rapids and in that area tomorrow. At any rate, the folks there are anxious to show her some, some of the schools and some of the other activities. She is actually uh, the second wife of the Russian premier. And with them, too, are the son, uh, Sergei, uh, who is the younger son, an older one, uh, was killed uh, during World War II. 
And Sergey is only 24. He's an electronic engineer and is working in Moscow. Incidentally, of real special interest to many people is that he married a Jewish girl uh, last year. They have one son. Uh, the two daughters are also with the party. Uh, Radha, she's the elder daughter. Uh, she's probably in her early 40s, although we don't usually try to guess at the age of a lady. <laughs> she's tall and slender, and she has light brown hair. I don't think we've seen much of the family on any of the coverage so far. Uh, incidentally, uh, the elder daughter, Radha, is married to the director of the Kiev Opera. And the younger daughter, Yulia, who is the wife of the editor of the government newspaper Izvestia, uh, is also in the party. But again, we haven't <laughs> seen very much of them either. Uh, I know uh, from uh, my information in the Coon Rapids area that there are plans for the young people tomorrow, but they haven't been announced yet. Perhaps we'll get them in the news tomorrow. Len? I believe Jim has something to say here. Well, Len, I just want to point out that uh, these, uh, as you said, this is an unscheduled appearance in front of the Ford Des Moines Hotel, and these are not uh, radio television microphones he's talking into. We have not lost our audio. These are simply radio, uh, rather I should say, movie cameramen, sound cameramen, uh, asking him for an interview. So uh, <coughs> our coverage is proceeding according to schedule, and uh, this has been an unscheduled stop uh, for the benefit of the photographers and the movie cameramen, sound cameramen particularly. Jim, perhaps we could say this is just another evidence of the organized confusion that most of us have experienced here the past several days. I think it's more evidence, too, that, uh, as somebody remarked earlier this morning, that Mr. Khrushchev himself is taking more control of this tour uh, than he did earlier. Uh, there was more and more evidence uh, in California that he was going to have his way a little more than he apparently had had in the past. And uh, some of the newsmen who are accompanying the party are saying now uh, that they wouldn't be surprised if this uh, indication crops up more during his tour here in Iowa, where there actually will be more chance for him to uh, suddenly take off in his own direction and uh, talk to somebody that he may see at the side of the road. Uh, more chance to do that here than there has been so far. Uh, this, of course, will give his security people many, many more gray hairs. Uh, but, uh, of course, he'll get to see more of the America that he actually wants to see. Uh, this, uh, in front of the hotel now, is some indication that uh, he has just decided that he wants to talk to these uh, newsreel and uh, cameramen, and so he and Mrs. Khrushchev are simply doing it. Len, it might be mentioned, too, that if he does want to speak with the real people of America, he'll get his chance tomorrow because he's going to be out in some of those fields and there are going to be a considerable number of farmers around. Of course, his H Iowa host, uh, Bob Garst of Coon Rapids, has long made plans to this effect and is very anxious to have his guest, namely Mr. K, do a little uh, visiting with some of the neighbors, shall we say. And if he does visit with those neighbors, he will truly see a demonstration of uh, men, farmers, uh, workers, and others, uh, the best salesmen we have for democracy, Len. Yes, I, I'm glad that he can talk to them. I think we should point out, in all fairness, uh, now after what I said earlier, uh, that our uh, American security people say that the tight security so far has been the doing of the Russian security people and not ours. We should throw that in just to be fair. Uh, the uh, impromptu interview here apparently is over. Now he's going to address the uh, crowd in general, apparently, a little bit. A very few people are going to understand much of that Russian. But uh, now he's turned around and is um, headed in the direction of the uh, lobby. And here he comes into the lobby of the Hotel Fort Des Moines, uh, where he and his party will put up during their Des Moines stay. Len, I talked with uh, Joe Whalen, the manager of the Fort Des Moines Hotel, and he said that uh, the Russians won't actually have to register in or sign the register as such. And here we see uh, Mr. Whalen, the general manager of the Fort Des Moines Hotel, giving the official greeting. Uh, Joe said that uh, they won't have to stop to register. They will be registered in by the hotel staff. And now Mr. Khrushchev is shaking some hands there in the lobby of the Fort Des Moines Hotel. He also said complete preparations have been made to handle all the luggage and uh, that everything was prepared for this visit of, oh, roughly 113, I believe, in the official party. He is certainly uh, getting closer to the people here in Des Moines immediately. Uh, I'm sure this is an unscheduled bit right here, too. There are some people in the lobby wanting to see Mr. Khrushchev, 
And Mr. Khrushchev decided he'd shake hands with them, and I saw a broad grin on his face. Apparently, this pleased him very much, as it should indeed. Uh, here we're going by the registration desk, where he will not stop, as Jim pointed out. When you get to be a VIP, you don't register for yourself. And he will go up now to the presidential suite and uh, prepare for his tour of Des Moines, which comes up uh, at about 3.30 this afternoon. Here is Mrs. Lovelace and Mrs. Khrushchev outside the hotel. Somebody's given Mrs. Khrushchev a nice bouquet of flowers, and they're standing there for picture taking. Len, this really brings back some memories. That uh, visit we made to Russia some years ago was punctuated rather repeatedly with the presentation of big bouquets of flowers. Personally, I'm rather glad to see that Mrs. Khrushchev, who is reputed to be a very charming lady, did receive those flowers because I'm sure it'll make her feel at home and make her feel very kindly toward uh, the friendliness and the hospitality of we Iowans. Well, from what we've seen, uh, definitely, I don't believe the Khrushchevs can say that the Des Moines welcome was cold. I don't believe it uh, can be described as warm either. We've seen much warmer welcomes here in Des Moines, but it definitely was not cold. I think it was uh, pretty much in line with what the president has been asking, that we be polite, cordial, and welcome him sincerely, and be neither hot nor cold. And now the crowd's breaking up uh, outside the uh, Fort Des Moines Hotel. Barricades are still up. There are some of those buses that brought the newsmen in from the airport. I'm sure they are emptied of newsmen now and that uh, they are swarming around trying to get what pictures they can. Is that a balloon man? Yes, sir. We can't have a crowd without one of those balloon men. I wonder if they have those in Russia, Herb. Well, they've got a lot of things, but I don't specifically remember balloon men, and I'm rather sure they wouldn't have them in that number because I've seen the second one now, Lynn. Herb, uh, did you happen to notice out at the airport when Ambassador Lodge got off the plane just before Lovelace, uh, Governor Lovelace was uh, introducing uh, Mr. Khrushchev? He whispered something... Uh, to one of the American in the party and said, uh, show him the number of swimming pools you have here in Iowa. Apparently he noticed some out of the plane window, and I believe that he is going to see one out at the Garst farm tomorrow. Yes, but it should be added this is not necessarily typical. Uh, every farm does not have a swimming pool. However, there's a, a real fine one out there at the Garst farm, and he will undoubtedly see some other things out there at the farm itself that will be very impressive to him. But uh, primarily, we must keep in mind that the major objective of his visit here is to see American agriculture in action. And there's no place in the world where he can see it as well as he can here in Iowa. And as we said earlier, Mr. Khrushchev must achieve better food production in his own country in order to meet the needs, the wants, and the demands of his people. Most of us who have been watching the preparations for this event have been uh, astounded that the uh, police and the security people have allowed uh, the general public to uh, congregate on that parking ramp across the street from the hotel the way they have. Uh, now that is a really sizable, <coughs> excuse me, sizable collection of people uh, on that unusual building just across from the Hotel Fort Des Moines and uh, there is no way on earth that I know of uh, to make sure that all those people over there are, are safe people uh, speaking in a security sort of way. Uh, nevertheless, all the floors of the parking ramp uh, have been pretty crowded with people. On the very top, there have been some security guards uh, who have been watching things. Uh, but uh, we are surprised that they have let the people congregate on that open-type building the way they have. Uh, incidentally, uh, it's rather amusing, on the circular uh, ramp part of the building, there are cables going from floor to floor. And there are people uh, intermingled with these cables, and it looks for all the world like we have a large number of caged people uh, watching Mr. Khrushchev arrive here in Des Moines. I hope the uh, Russian photographers who are along uh, don't uh, send the picture of these caged people uh, back to Russia for propaganda purposes. You can be almost certain that they'll make some use of those pictures. Uh, Len, you made reference to the surprising uh, turn of events with the people being so close and with, of course, so many people on that ramp. Uh, as you know, uh, we've had some experience with presidential visitations here. Uh, I've always marveled at the job that the security people do. They seem to me are the most efficient group of people on Earth. 
the job they do in the protecting of their particular uh, guest or responsibility. And I suspect that there were more security people among the crowd than what you and I would normally realize. Uh, certainly, uh, they have proved again in this tremendous challenge that has been theirs, that they've done a good job of protection up to now. Now, of course, we're seeing some of the cars uh, being let back into the stream of traffic as these streets are open, Locust Street and 10th Street. And Len, don't you imagine that quite a few of the people we see that are still standing inside the lobby of the Port Des Moines and, and those that remain across the street are waiting uh, for the approximate uh, schedule of an hour and five minutes from now when he's scheduled again to leave the hotel to go, the, uh, go to the Des Moines Packing Company and the John Deere Works. I'm sure a number of them, yes, will just stay there and get another good glimpse at him uh, when he comes out. There's one of the guards on the very top of that uh, circular type parking ramp. Uh, we heard reports that there would be riflemen up there, and sure enough, there is one of them. And here now we have the caged people. <laughs> Heavens, uh, they're not really caged. They're perfectly free Americans, but they are just curious, and that's a wonderful place to see Mr. Khrushchev, and they have gotten themselves into that position to see. Uh, but you can uh, note that there are a number of people there. As Herb says, a certain percentage of those people over there are not just uh, idle Americans. They are security people uh, keeping things under control. Uh, Locust Street has opened the traffic again, and uh, Des Moines will return to uh, somewhat uh, near normal uh, for a little while at least, although uh, the absence of parking uh, will make any Des Moines resident uh, quickly realize that uh, not as all just normal. Uh, this street uh, looks a good deal different in the usual course of Des Moines event. Uh, anyway, it, uh, now at 3.30, that's just about in an hour from now, uh, Mr. Khrushchev <coughs> and his party will head out for, uh, first of all, the Des Moines packing plant, uh, and then up to the John Deere Des Moines Works, where they will see uh, some of uh, the Des Moines industrial production that, of course, is very definitely tied to agriculture. Uh, after the tour is over, and he will have a chance at both those places to speak with people in the production end of this uh, business of agriculture.